Good day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin and I'm an American learning to live down under here in beautiful Sydney, Australia. So since moving here, I have had so many friends both here in Australia and in America ask me what the healthcare system is like over here in Australia, if the healthcare system is really as much of a nightmare in America as people say. And while I'm still in the middle of doing research for a huge America versus Australia healthcare and health insurance video, this one is a little bit personal. In this, I am sharing my own emergency room stories, both in America in 2019 and over here in Australia in December 2021. So both of these are completely based off of my own experience, and hopefully this will give just a little bit of insight into just how different the healthcare systems are between these two countries. So take a seat, grab a bicky, grab a cuppo, because this is America versus Australia, my emergency room stories. So the health insurance that I had over in the States was tied to my employment like it is for so many other Americans. I paid $78 a fortnight and my employer paid $141 on top of that. So we're talking $219 a fortnight that was being put towards my health insurance. And I actually had pretty decent healthcare coverage compared to some people I know. And this was just for medical, it didn't cover dental, it didn't cover vision, this was just medical. And I had about a $3,000 deductible over in the States. Over here in Australia, I am currently not eligible for Medicare. I know quite a few people have been asking me about this, saying, well, just apply for PR, you'll get it then. I will be able to apply for Medicare at the end of the year, but until the end of the year, I am not eligible for Medicare. And I did come over with private health insurance, which I still pay fortnightly, and that has been $88 a fortnight over here in Australia. So obviously, the price difference between the States and Australia is huge. On top of that, private health insurance isn't a requirement over here in Australia. There is a Medicare levy that does have to be paid over here if you don't have private health insurance, but it is significantly cheaper than the private health insurance over in the States. On top of that, health insurance in the States is actually a requirement, whereas over here in Australia they have Medicare, so everybody who is a permanent resident or a citizen is already automatically covered through Medicare. So now that you know that little bit of background about my insurance issues, let me jump into what happened to me in the States in 2019. These health issues were completely different. They were almost really random events. They had nothing to do with former health concerns, any sort of pre-existing medical conditions. These were both fairly random and they are for completely different medical issues. So that will tie into the comparison a little bit. My issue over in the States was I was having really, really severe pain in like my uterus in that area where adults, I think I could say uterus on YouTube. I went to the emergency room, somebody drove me so I didn't need an ambulance. They checked me in, I was in severe crippling pain. They had to lay me down on a bed and I remember like on a scale of one to 10, that felt like an eight. It felt like something was really, really wrong. I was worried that maybe my IUD had shifted, but when the emergency room doctor came in, he did his quick little examination, um, basically just like pressing on my stomach in that area for about 30 seconds, sat down, said, no, your IUD hasn't shifted, it's not that. We can't give you an ultrasound right now because it's the weekend and our ultrasound machine is down on the weekends and we have no ultrasound techs who work on the weekends. So he basically said all he could do was give me a prescription for extra strength ibuprofen, which is pretty much the same as Nurofen over here in Australia. He gave me a prescription for that, told me to follow up with my OBGYN and to go home. I was in there for maybe about an hour and for a pregnancy test and extra strength Nurofen, that cost me $742 after my insurance paid their portion. Before my insurance kicked in, it was a little over $1,200. Now on top of that, I did require some care a little bit later. I did have to go to my OBGYN and get an ultrasound done at another hospital. The ultrasound cost me about $60 and the visit to my OBGYN cost me an additional $80. And on top of that, they couldn't actually properly diagnose me because I didn't have an ultrasound done when the actual incident was happening. So that was well over $800 spent to be told we don't know what happened. Now, as for my emergency room issue in Australia, it was very, very different. This actually involved my eyes. I wear contact lenses. I'm actually cross-eyed. I'm sure if you take some stills, you would be able to see that, but typically my eyes are fairly straight when I have my contacts in. 
I've been wearing them since I was 13, but for some reason, my contacts one night wanted to give me a really weird problem. It wouldn't come out of my eye, and I had been playing around with my eyes so much to get it out that it had felt sore, it felt swollen, and it still felt like the contact lens was stuck in my eye. So I went to sleep and woke up the next day, and it felt so much worse. So Mark drove me over to the emergency room that I was able to go to on my private health insurance. We couldn't go to the closer hospital because that's public. I had to go a little bit further to Westmead, which is private. And this was one of the things that really caught me off guard. Because it was COVID, Mark couldn't come in. So when I walked in and checked myself in, I gave them my health insurance card. I gave them a copy of my passport too. And they said, okay, it's going to be $312. Like, I haven't even been seen by anybody yet. Is that just the administrative cost to $312 for an emergency room visit before anybody's even seen me? So it is what it is. They said that they would mail me my invoice. I said that's fine. Sat down. I probably had about half an hour wait before actually seeing a doctor. She checked my eyes. She washed them out. She rinsed them out. Put a couple drops in. Examined them. She said that she couldn't find anything in there. My eye was just so swollen from messing around with it so much that the contact lens had probably dislodged and popped out and I didn't even realize it. So she gave me an antibiotic cream. She gave me some saline and sent me home. There was no need to go to the chemist like I did over in the States to get my prescription filled. It was all given to me right then and there. And this might not be the norm. Again, this is just my emergency room experiences and I'm sure they're very different all across hospitals, all across the states, all across the states and territories over here in Australia as well. So it took a little over a month for me to actually get that invoice in from the hospital and when it came in I almost fell over. My entire emergency room visit was $156. It was half of the fee that they told me up front and there were no additional costs added. And this was the entire fee up front. This was before I was reimbursed by my insurance company. I called them up, paid the full fee, and then sent a copy of that invoice over to my insurance. And they reimbursed me $90.35, which means my entire emergency room visit over here in Australia with just private health insurance without Medicare cost me $65.65 out of pocket. That's how much just the ultrasound cost me over in the States. I was absolutely flabbergasted when I opened up the statement and saw that that's all I had to pay. And then to find out that I was getting a huge chunk of that reimbursed through my insurance. Over in the States, you really have to fight with your insurance company to get anything reimbursed, to get a lot of things covered. But over here in Australia, all I had to do was fill out a claim form in about 60 seconds and I was finished. Yeah, I am still kind of in shock at just how affordable healthcare is over here in Australia. Like, I almost said the word cheap, and I know that there are Australians who are going to be like, that's not cheap. Having to pay that much, like, no, wait till you're on Medicare and it's free, or wait till you're on Medicare and it'll be like $6, not $65, that's cheap. But with my experiences in the States, even just going to your regular doctor, your GP, or your PCP, as it's normally called over in the States, that can cost up to $100 if you're not going for just a regular routine annual examination. Going to my dermatologist for a prescription refill used to cost me $90 just to walk in the door and get seen over in the States, and that was with my health insurance. Over here, I was able to get that exact same prescription filled by a GP. It cost me $10 to go to the GP, and the prescription only cost me $7. So it really is amazing just how affordable the healthcare is over here. I can only imagine what it's like in other OECD countries that have a sort of similar healthcare system to Australia. And honestly, it is so frustrating to hear so many Americans talk about how horrible a socialized healthcare system could be or how terrible the care is when really I felt like I've had so much better care over here in Australia than I've ever had over in the States. Granted, I've had a lot more care over in the States. I've seen an array of different doctors. Some were wonderful, some were awful. And over here in Australia, I've been lucky that the doctors I've run into are very kind and professional. The administrative staff and the nurses have been professional and very, very helpful so far. And again, this is all just coming from my own personal experience. I don't really have statistics to talk about. 
Like I said, this is one of those more anecdotal, kind of chill videos with you guys. This isn't something where I'm going to be getting into a deep dive talking about the statistics of healthcare and yada yada yada. I'm still doing a little bit more research on that and it feels like I have gone down a huge rabbit hole trying to find this information. So that video is in the pipeline. It will happen. It might not happen too soon, but I'm still doing research on that. So stay tuned if you want to see what that future America versus Australia video is going to be. But thank you guys for watching, for listening to my little comparison of my emergency room stories in America versus Australia. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button down below to join our little Amer Australian family. I post on Mondays and normally Thursdays about the differences between American and Australian culture and the overall process of learning to live down under. My name's Caitlin and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!